Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. And I agree wholeheartedly that the partnership with JPAL has been incredible. So thank you so much for having me here. I just want to start by acknowledging that all of you, especially in government, have taken time away from your very, very busy lives to be here to talk about nerdy things like research and evaluation and impact. And I salute you and I congratulate you because I know how hard it is to walk away from your desk to do this work, but it's so important. So congratulations for being here here. I'm sure it will be a great use of your time. Um, and so as Quentin mentioned, I worked in Philadelphia city government for nearly eight years, um, including during the height of the economic recession. And so I feel very personal and I have those up close experiences of working in a constrained um, environment, constrained in terms of resources. And for that reason, I feel very strongly that quality data and rigorous evidence should be at the center of all of our policy and budget decisions. Without that, we are making decisions based on what we hope will work. We are not informed about the trade-offs that we're making with our very constrained resources and taxpayer dollars. And so it's for that reason that when I left the city of Philadelphia, I was really enthusiastic and excited that Results for America asked me to join their team. My role at Results for America is to work closely with policymakers to help them create policies and mechanisms to place data and evidence at the center of their decisions. Results for America is a nonprofit organization founded in 2012, so we're a fairly young organization like JPAL North America. And our sole mission is to improve social outcomes by making policy decisions that are made, by da made with data and evidence at the center. And we don't care about data and evidence for the end goal of data and evidence. We care about it because we think that's the best and the fastest way to get to maximum impact and maximum outcomes for our residents. And our work spans across many different areas. We work at the federal, state, local, well, federal and local level. We have a budding state program. We have a global initiative called Results for All. We recently launched a nonprofit initiative um, with nonprofit leaders to help inform policy making. We also have an initiative called the What Works Media Project to help tell the story behind why data and evidence matters. We think that's particularly important right now. And we host many events with policymakers and thought leaders. We have this best-selling book, uh, Moneyball for Government. If you don't have a copy, I'd be happy to send you one. Um, and many other things that we do to try to move the practice towards using data and evidence. And as part of my work, I'm so lucky that one of the things I get to do is to manage a local government fellowship program that we organized in September of 2014. We're now in the second cohort. We have 15 local government leaders, two of which are here today. Um, and I get to work with them to help them put data and evidence at the center of their work. They're already champions in this space. They're doing it, and we help to accelerate their pace of change. One way that we do this through the fellowship is by helping and supporting each local government in creating research partnerships with academic and research institutions across the country. So my comments on research partnerships are really grounded both in my experience with the city of Philadelphia as policy director, but also now on behalf of Results for America building this program. Um, and shout out to Dr. Sarah Heller, who after her amazing study in science was published, we said, we want one too, um, and she's so generous to work with Philadelphia now in doing an, ev an evaluation of our summer jobs program. So let me start with some of the challenges that we've seen through research partnerships. The first is this perennial challenge of short versus long-term goals. Governments in particular have to deal with the fire right in front of them, both figuratively and um, literally. And so it's really hard sometimes to think about that long-term goal of improving outcome for residents and how do we get there. Um, especially in the context of research partnerships. We know that the findings from these evaluations are not immediate. It might take a couple months or a couple of years, and we need to make decisions now. So why invest the time in research partnerships? Another is finding flexible academics who understand the bureaucracy that is government, as well as the champions in local government who are gonna help shepherd this project through because it takes time and energy and many decisions. Um, 
We've seen a, a big issue come up with past versus future investments. So many times practitioners are thinking about how do we evaluate the investments that we've already made, uh, programs that we've been investing in, sometimes for years or even decades. Whereas from an academic's perspective, that's really hard to evaluate. They want to evaluate a new program, a new policy, or perhaps some modification. And then, of course, scheduling and resources, right? Yeah, these, are, these are common problems. Um, I think we've hit upon some ingredients for success. And I started with recipe, and then I realized, no, that's way too presumptuous. So here are some ingredients. One is real clarity from both the practitioner and the academic perspective on how research helps um, further your policy goals. The second is finding a true partner, and I think Sarah highlighted so many of the ways that she is a true partner. She is flexible, she is open, she's giving them findings, initial findings with many caveats before it's been published, right? These are the things that practitioners want and never feel like they're getting from academics. On the flip side, a government partner who is both equal parts authority and enthusiastic in doing this work, it is a long slog, and so you need someone who really cares about the data, but also has the authority to get the right people in the room to make the decision. We've heard a lot that FaceTime matters. It doesn't have to be a tremendous amount, but you know, in the case of Dr. Heller, she came and met with Mayor Nutter to talk about her summer jobs evaluation program in Chicago. I think I don't know that without that we would have ever been able to establish a partnership. You can tell me if I'm wrong about that. Um, Creativity is so important. I talked about this past versus future investments. So, you know, especially from the academic perspective, being creative and thinking about how can we introduce rigor into this design, into this methodology, while still allowing the practitioners to implement the programs they want. And then focusing on things that are important but not urgent. I love this chart. It's from Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Effective, Highly Effective People. In the top left, you see things that are important and urgent, and these are things that we do all the time. And in the bottom right are things that are not important and not urgent, and hopefully we do a good job of avoiding it. But I think the real problem is here. So a lot of us focus on things that are not important but very, very urgent, rather than the things that are important but not urgent. And that's where I think research partnerships lives, at the important but not urgent. I mean, of course, the findings are urgent, but getting to those findings takes time. And so I think this long-term perspective is so important. I'm just going to close with a couple of tips, I think, with a, a focus specifically on governments for how you can make research and evaluation really salient, the needs of research and evaluation really salient building a research agenda. We see this at the federal level with good success. Developing an evaluation policy, just the tenets or the principles of what, when and why you want to evaluate things helps establish a framework for everyone in your government. Of course, tying research evaluations to the budget, I think we see that in the results first example. In Baltimore, they have an amazing program-based budgeting um, system, which really ties the two together. It helps bring the, the, the need for data and evidence to the forefront. If you can engage in multiple projects at a time, I encourage you to do so. There are so many questions to answer, and the evidence base on what's actually working is quite shallow. Um, and then something that we see in Tulsa and other jurisdictions, too, is thinking about either an internal or external advisory board. Folks who can help champion support, sometimes bring funding to the table to help you think about how to better integrate data and evidence into your work, in particular with the research and evaluation framework in mind. So thank you so much. I look forward to speaking.